Hey everybody, today we're gonna take a quick look at Money Monster, directed by Jodie Foster and starring George Clooney and Julia Roberts. Our story for this movie begins with George Clooney sitting on a toilet, like all good stories, and Clooney plays a man named Lee Gates who hosts a television financial advice show called Money Monster, basically the movie's version of Mad Money. And one day, the show is suddenly taken hostage by some crazy New Yorker with a gun and a bomb vest. And this crazy guy with a bomb, whose name is Kyle, played by Jack O'Connell, recently lost his entire life savings after investing it all in a company called Ibis, which recently lost $800 million due to a computer glitch, which of course caused their stock price to tank. Kyle is not buying their story about the computer glitch. He thinks there's some kind of conspiracy going on, and damn it, he wants answers. Lee does his best to work with the guy and convince him not to either shoot him or blow him up, while the police and Lee's producer Patty, played by Julia Roberts, are working behind the scenes to try to keep everything under control. From what I've seen so far, this is getting a lot of mixed reviews from the critics, which I can kind of understand. Even though I personally enjoyed the movie, I had a lot of fun with it, the story does have a few problems. Right off the bat, the claims that this company lost almost a billion dollars due to a computer glitch sounds pretty ridiculous, and the idea that any company would even think of using such a lame-ass excuse is just ridiculous. Like, how does a computer glitch make $800 million vanish into the ether? That it doesn't work that way, obviously. Even more ridiculous is the idea that anyone would even buy such a lame-ass excuse, and yet that appears to be the case. Even though Lee has an interview scheduled with the company's CEO to hopefully get more details about what exactly went wrong, he's still buying their computer glitch excuse. And why, I have no idea. And over time, it gets even more preposterous as the movie gradually reveals the real reason Ibis lost all that money. I won't go into spoilers, but basically what it boils down to is their CEO is a fucking moron. And speaking of morons, the police in this movie. Oh dear. So basically when Kyle takes over Money Monster and starts holding Lee hostage, he forces him to wear this bomb vest and Kyle has his thumb on a dead man switch, so if anything happens to him, his thumb comes off the switch and the bomb goes kaboom. So they're trying to figure out a way to disarm the bomb vest, and they notice a little receiver on it that apparently gets a signal from the dead man switch and causes the bomb to go off. So if they can take that out, then the switch is useless and they don't have to worry about the bomb exploding. So their solution for taking out this receiver is... Shoot George Clooney. Shoot the hostage. What is this, speed? Why would they even consider that? And at first, the police captain, who is played by Giancarlo Esposito, tells the officer that suggests this plan, like, what are you, nuts? We're not gonna shoot the hostage. But then later on in the movie, they actually try to do that. They figure, well, we got nothing better to do. What has he got, like an 80% chance of survival? Yeah, good enough. Go ahead, shoot him. The fuck? And this plan is stupid for two reasons. One, it involves shooting the hostage. And two, Kyle brought two bomb vests with him. Because Lee was supposed to be interviewing the CEO of Ibis. And that's why Kyle decided to take the show hostage in order to get some answers. Because he assumed the CEO of Ibis would be there. He was conveniently delayed, so he never showed up. But the second vest is still there. Even if you take out the first one, you still have the second one sitting over in a box in the corner. It's still gonna go off. What are you trying to do here? Like, did you forget about the other bomb, you idiots? And they're watching this whole thing play out on live TV, so it's not like they didn't know the other bomb was there. They knew! And Kyle's plan to take some hostages on live TV in order to find out what happened to all his money Certainly doesn't sound like the smartest plan, but then again, this is a guy who invested his entire life savings into one stock based on a tip from some douchebag on TV, so clearly he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. So actually, the idea that he wouldn't think his cunning plan all the way through, that actually makes sense. I totally buy that. Basically, the moral of the story is, everyone is stupid. Except Julia Roberts. She was the one person in this movie that actually had two brain cells to rub together. So, the story, not exactly a great success. But the movie does succeed in other areas. For one thing, George Clooney is 
every bit as good as he always is. He's basically playing this television host who's supposed to be a stock market expert, but really he's just a Wall Street pawn that's been feeding the public their talking points. And he plays the role very well. Julia Roberts does a fantastic job as his producer, who is desperately trying to keep everything from going to shit, and basically has to work as not only a TV producer, but also a hostage negotiator. She and Clooney work very well together in this movie, which is remarkable considering they were rarely on set at the same time due to how their schedules worked out. And they didn't have to be on set at the same time because Clooney was always in the studio and Roberts was in the producer's booth, so two separate locations. And yet it never feels like they're in two separate locations, which I suppose is a testament both to their acting ability and also to Jodie Foster's work as the director. Thought she did a really good job in this movie, probably better than the screenplay deserves. Jack O'Connell's performance was okay overall. That accent though, oh. It was not good. As soon as that guy started speaking, I thought, you know, I'm not familiar with this actor, I don't know where he's from, but I do know he is not from New York, and probably not from the United States. And sure enough, I looked him up on IMDb, he's English. Yeah, better work on that accent, Jack. Also, I was rather surprised at just how funny this movie was at times. After watching the trailer, I expected it to be mostly a serious thriller, and... For the most part it is, but there are some very funny comedic moments in this movie that work rather well. I already mentioned that scene with Clooney on the toilet at the beginning of the movie. There's this really weird running gag about some erectile dysfunction medication. And also, every time in this movie that someone tries to diffuse the situation, literally and figuratively, it always goes hilariously wrong. There's a moment where Clooney is trying to plead with the public to help him bring the Ibis stock price back up by buying a bunch of shares because that'll convince people there is value in the stock and it'll naturally raise the price. Fails completely. Instead, the price just drops. It's like, oh, guess you weren't as popular as you thought you were. And there's a moment where they bring in his girlfriend to work as a hostage negotiator and instead she just ends up chewing him out the whole time. Very funny stuff. So final verdict, I probably would not recommend paying full price for this one, but I could recommend it as a matinee. It has a few shortcomings, but Clooney and Roberts are both acting their asses off, and I had a lot of fun with it. And that about does it for Money Monster, so till next time, take care.